I don't know where. We'll put that over there, I guess. Alrighty. Hi, guys. I think you can hear me and see me on this one. <coughs> Everybody let me know if you can hear me and see me before I get like really into everything. Uh, sorry for being a little bit late tonight, guys. You can hear me. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay. So let me zip back up to the top. And hi, Barbara. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Mina. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Rich. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Terry. Hi, Laura. Um, oh. Let's see. Hi, Angela. Hi, Laura. Uh, Laura and Larry are like right there together. Hi, Larry. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Lori Lee. Awesome, guys. So glad that you can be here tonight. All right. So um, I've been actually working on this project all day, trying to figure out what I wanted to to, to kind of do for the, the new year. And we've been doing some pretty simple projects over the past uh, few live streams. And I thought, you know, it's time for maybe something a little bit more challenging or realistic, however you want to kind of throw that out there. Um, hi Dawn. So this is our project tonight. It is a lovely little owl and he's kind of hidden inside of a tree trunk and then there's some flowers down below. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, we have a little bit of black background in here. We have a little owl that's we're going to try to make him push back into his environment. And then the roses are a little bit out of focus, which can be kind of fun um, when wood burning. It doesn't have to be super crisp all the time. You can have stuff out of focus. So I don't think, I bet we've done a little bit of out of focus stuff over the course of the live streams, but this is one of those as well. And then we have a lot of neat uh, bark texture as well. So. We will see how that goes. Um, let's see. Shirley says you're hearing me repeat everything. Like there's two of you. Okay. Does anybody else have an echo going on? Let me see. Mike. Oh, you're right. I have something else alive here. No, that's turned off. Hmm. Doesn't look to me like I have two microphones can hear me but you only see part of my face well I'm here I don't think that um, I don't know you might try and scroll through uh, all right Barbara yep yeah, thank you uh, for suggesting that everybody likes and um, subscribes 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 tonight all right no echo okay it might be something on your end um, Shirley I'm sorry sounds like the sound is okay Oh, uh, Mina is suggesting that you might have two windows open. Hello, Paolo. All right, cool. So I do apologize for missing you guys last week. I was very sick, um, as was my family. We were all just a wreck. So, um, where's my thing? I mean, I didn't even... I. I was in bed for about three days with a bad fever, which is um, pretty bad for me. Um, it doesn't happen very often. And I was like so sick I couldn't even get up to my computer to send everybody a message that I couldn't be there for the live stream. So I sent out, I think, um, from my phone on the couch, I just sent out a message to Facebook saying that I couldn't make it. So I do apologize for the lack of communication on that. Um, we are mostly through this darn flu and <clears throat> short of just a little bit of congestion, I think we're good to go. So it was not fun, but most of it all kind of worked its way through before, uh, Christmas morning 
Like my son, he was the last one to get it, and he finally turned the corner corner Christmas morning. So that was really nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, Christmas Eve was pretty rough. Okay. Yes, I think we're all on the mend. Thank you. All right. So, let's see. Uh, I think I'm going to hit this really quickly with a little bit of a sanding pad. I have uh, one of these little M jump sanding pads. And I think tonight I really want to focus on the owl and the little black background kind of in that little cave so just gonna very lightly sand mostly the owl i don't really worry about uh sanding the outline around the owl or this archway here because we're gonna burn a black background around that and it's just gonna disappear that line is gonna disappear into the, the black background and I don't want to sand too much that I lose important features that I have transferred on. So just a really light touch. If you do too much sanding, please wear a respirator because it's no fun um, to be breathing sawdust. Lisa says, I notice you don't transfer every line and I transfer everything and I feel that I am doing more work. The, that tree would take me all day to transfer. Can you please explain this or help me understand? That is a very great question. Um, so on some of the previous live streams, I actually walked you through my process. I think it's when we were transferring on that the hands. There was a father and like a kiddo hand doing a fist bump. On that live stream, I actually showed you guys how to... Um, transfer and like sorry I just finished dinner I'm trying to pick stuff out of my teeth um, anyway I, I kind of broke down how I like to go about transferring stuff there is totally um, you know a, a method to the madness as far as I have transferred on every single tiny little tidbit or detail and then sometimes I just kind of like rough in a little bit so if we're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, if we're talking about like the owl and all the intricate details on here, I will transfer more information on something of the main subject than I will um, out here in the background. So I look for um, big value changes is generally where I want to transfer things on. Um, and it's totally up to you. I know sometimes in the past I used to transfer on maybe more than I do now. Um, right now I just kind of like give myself a guideline as far as keeping track of where I'm at and then I can fill in some of those details along the way. So I want enough information there that I don't lose my way but not so much detail that it's overwhelming because sometimes if you transfer on especially in the lighter areas, a ton of detail, you're gonna have to sand that off anyway to where you can barely see it. So there's definitely a balancing act, but that's a very, very good question, Lisa. And I hope that gives you a little bit of information. Um, you'll find a balance, I think, over time as far as how much you transfer on and how much you don't. Um, Shirley, I'm glad that you got your um, everything figured out with the sound. That's great. I think I need to zoom in a little bit, so I will do that. So for right now, I'm probably going to start working on the background. Oh, come on, menu. Spot meter focus. Aha, here we go. That's kind of dark. Let's try that again. It's a little bit better. All right, so hopefully you can see there. So I love establishing the darkest values of the project first. The first thing that we are going to do is we're going to put on, a, like put in a really hard outline around the owl and up around this archway. And then we're gonna fill it in with a nice dark black value. So that will set 
the overall tone for the project and we will get those darkest values laid in. Oh, Larry, I'm sorry that you're not doing very well. Uh, it's no fun to be sick. Hi, Estella. Okay, glad that helps, Lisa. Yeah, Larry, I've done the same thing. I've sanded way too much, and then you have to kind of guess at stuff. So I am using the little tiny pro point that I ground down from a normal shader um, just to make this go a wee bit faster. So whenever I burn black backgrounds, I want a really crisp kind of an outline here uh, that will serve as a buffer. Because I want to protect the, the pure values of the lighter areas. I don't want to just scorch this area and get that ghosting and overburn in there. I want it to be nice and pure. Um, so I take my time and I create a buffer zone here with a nice hard edge. Try to keep a light touch because um, the point can sink down into the wood. And, you know, if you don't mind texture, just let it sink into the wood. I, I try not to have a whole lot of texture on my projects, but that's just me. Um, hi, Tracy. Um, yes, we are feeling better finally. It's been a, a rough couple weeks, but we are oh, finally on the mend. Hi, Meta. Hi, Cindy. Um, Cindy is asking, I didn't get an email with the pattern. Does that mean your su subscription has lapsed? Um, the pattern right now is on Patreon and I just put it out this afternoon. Um, you should, it should be on Patreon. So I am not sure. That's a very good question. <coughs> uh, guys, when, when I post stuff on Patreon, do you get an email? Because I don't really see that other side of um, everything. I'm hoping that you get an email when I put on a Patreon post. Hi, Mellow Yellow. So we are just burning a nice dark value, a nice buffer zone around our owl and our tree trunk. <laughs> ah, Terry, I would, I would have hoped that you could get the pro point for Christmas as well. I don't know what's going on with the, uh, production of this very handy little thing. Maybe I should just figure out how to make it myself somehow. Um, hello, Christopher. Uh, greetings to you in Ecuador. Um, so you guys do get an email from Patreon. Okay. So, um, let's see. Um, where'd it go? Um, Cindy, you might take a look in your spam folder on email because it does look like some people are getting uh, Patreon emails. If you don't get Patreon emails, it, they might be going into a spam folder because I'm finding that more and more of my emails are not getting to where they are supposed to be, which is not very cool. All right, I'm going to turn this sideways. We'll drop this down a tad. Hey. Okay. <coughs> hmm. So, Cindy, you usually get an email, but you didn't today. Um, I don't know. 
I know that um, usually the Patreon subscriptions are being renewed right about this time, around the first of the year. So sometimes there can be like a little problem with the, the billing or whatever. Um, but it you should still be all good. Bum, bum, bum. Um, Dawn is asking, uh, what about, about what type of air cleaner do I use for drawing the smoke in? Um, that's a good question. Hi, TH. Uh, I don't usually have something to draw the smoke in because I don't burn really dark all that often. But there are some really nifty items out there that can kind of filter the air and pull the smoke in. If I'm going to be burning for black backgrounds for like a long time, I will put on a full face respirator so that I keep the smoke out of my eyes and lungs. But for something small like this, I don't usually um, yeah, wear a respirator. But you always should, safety first. <laughs> You know, it's one of those do as I say, not as I do. Um, <laughs> Surely, I might be able to find a machine shop online that can duplicate it. Yeah, my uncle, he runs a machine shop as well. And I think I've had him make a couple other points for me, but I don't, just don't know if he could do that. Well, I know he could do that, but... I don't know if he would have the time for, for it. He can make anything. My uncle can. So. Okay. Hmm. Um, so that's interesting, Lori Lee, that you renewed last month, but you don't get any emails. Hmm. It's kind of frustrating. Because, yeah, you should get a notification when I post stuff on Patreon. Unless there's, like, a, a setting where you turned it off. I don't know, because I think you have to kind of, like, opt into those things. Perhaps. Because they thought. Okay, so we're almost done with our little buffer zone here. Um, hi, Vivian. Uh, Meta is asking about the approximate size of the wood plank. So the live area, um, not including the bark here, the live area is 6 inches wide by 11 inches tall. And do I ever seal the live edges before burning? I, I do not because I don't want any kind of stains, finishes, dyes, clear coats, or whatever on the wood before I burn it. Uh, for safety's sake, I just want the the pure unfinished wood. I've never had a problem with the bark coming off. I get these pieces from Walnut Hollow online, and so far everything's worked out really well with that. Thanks, Vivian. We are finally feeling a bit better. Um, it's been a pretty rough couple weeks, and so glad that that is behind us for now. So as you know, life is always full of challenges. And uh, you guys have been through a few of our uh, challenges regarding our power system here in the mountains and uh yeah we got another another doozy of a problem our um our batteries that support the entire system have died so if we don't have a generator or solar panels we are pretty much toast as far as power so i get to go spend an astronomical amount of money buying new batteries for our house system so not very cool on that right after Christmas um, but what are you gonna do I mean we're we are way off grid so 
We're gonna maybe try a different kind of battery this time. Um, we've done two rounds of the lead acid batteries and they keep, I don't know, you're supposed to get several years out of them. We got like maybe four and a half years out of the first set and like three and a half years out of the seventh, second set and they're very, very expensive. We're talking thousands of dollars uh, for the batteries and they're dead. They won't hold a charge. So, um, we're looking at other options, but they're all very expensive. <laughs> so, Merry Christmas to us. So right now, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just uh, increasing the size of my buffer zone because I want to keep this area here nice and pure and unburned, like the unburned value. I want it nice and light. I don't want this this ghosty orangey effect in there. So, um, thanks, guys. Yeah. Um. Not not very cool on the whole battery thing. And hopefully everything stays on tonight. Uh, but if for whatever reason the entire feed just like I disappear, um, we had a problem and the generator couldn't turn on fast enough to save the power system. So, so we just spent Oh my gosh, like $4,500 this last spring on another part of our system that died. So it's kind of frustrating, but not much we can do except for fix the things that breaks. <sighs> it's always something. Yep, Terry. Exactly. Um, Vicki is asking, um, do we generate enough solar to equalize our batteries at least once a week? We do equalize them quite a bit. Uh, my husband's kind of in the, um, he like does the equalization, but yeah. Um, I know there's lead acid batteries, we keep them topped <coughs> off and we equalize them, but we have a very big uh, power consumption family we like our computers and TVs, so we're trying to get maybe into like a lithium ion battery or something, something different and newer. We'll see. They're crazy expensive too. Anyway, so I'm just kind of increasing the border here. Yeah, Vivian, I wish we could get uh, cheaper batteries, but with inflation and everything, they're, they're more and more by the month. But I do appreciate everybody's patience. I know we've had a few live streams where I just kind of disappeared and had to come back and restart everything. So at least we have more of like uh, more control over our power outages. I know those poor people in California, they have the rolling blackouts and stuff like that. So at least we can kind of control a little bit um, how to fix our problems. We can't always fit or, you know, control why that happens. But anyway, all right, let me re, oh, hey, that's a bit brighter. Uh, thanks guys. Yeah, here's our little lo lovely Christmas tree. It's a balsam. It's very friendly. Um, the needles aren't very mean, so. Yeah, Tracy, I agree with the lithium ion batteries and I might be saying the wrong thing or the wrong thing. I don't think they're actually lithium ion. It's a different thing. There's a lithium something. It doesn't have the, I don't know. Dad just sent me a link on the new batteries. It's something different. It's not like the, the car batteries on the Teslas and stuff that are catching on fire. Um, it's something different. It doesn't have all the heavy metals and stuff in it. Anyway, I'm still learning, but I don't want one of those Tesla type batteries anywhere near us. Sorry if I get banned on YouTube, but um, those things catch fire and you can't put them out. So I don't think it's one of those. I may have, yeah, there's a new one. Anyway, 
I'm glad that wood burning is my forte and not batteries because I don't, I don't know. But we're shopping. We're shopping for an alternative source to the lead acid batteries. And if we can't find anything, we'll probably just do the lead acid batteries again because we are out of time and options. <clears throat> um, thanks, guys. Cindy, you renewed your sub subscription. Oh, okay, cool. Everything's good. Awesome. You're off grid also, and you just bought new batteries last year. Very expensive indeed. Cindy, may I ask if you want to share what kind of um, what kind of batteries did you go for for your system? And I promise, once we get into more um, intricate detail, I will talk more about wood burning instead of batteries. But this takes a little bit of time. We're just building up that buffer zone, and then I'll fill in the black background and then we will get on to probably I'll probably start with the owl's eyes and get those filled in because we are definitely in the market for new batteries and every year there's something else there's new things our neighbor has um one of those trucks the lightning trucks they keep like burning down and we're terrified that it's gonna burn our whole mountain down. So, kinda scary. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa is asking, how are the kittens doing with the tree? So, Normally I put garland, like little white bits of garland all over the tree because I like it. It makes it look like snow. Um, I did not do that this year because they, the kittens try to eat everything. And when we first brought the tree in, they were fascinated and wanted to like eat the pine needles off the tips. So I had to get really aggressive and spray them with water because the, the, the oils from the pine trees can cause them really bad health problems. So I had to get pretty gnarly um, with the squirt bottle to get them to avoid the tree. And ever since then, it's been better. And our tree has all plastic ornaments this year. Or my daughter and I, we made like wooden ornaments. So everything is non-breakable on the tree this year. And that has made um, a big help as well. Because they, they like to get whatever they can reach and they knock them down. So... We have a very kitten-friendly tree this year. Um, Cindy, you have the sealed lithium batteries. Okay, yeah. I know there's there's so, uh, a few different kinds of the lithium batteries out there. And I think some of those are what we're looking at. They're supposed to be safer. Like you say, they don't need to be vented, like the lead acid batteries and all that. They're supposed to be safer, so. Hopefully we can find something that doesn't cost $20,000 because that won't work. Hello, Omar. Hola. Okay, so now I'm just kind of filling in the black background. You might notice that I'm going with the grain. I find that the, the black backgrounds work better if you burn with the grain as much as possible. So just long, um, just smooth, steady strokes here to get this black background in place. I find if you can work in shorter sections, you will get a, a much darker, deeper black value than if you try to burn like all the way up and all the way down. Yeah, the wood tends to burn the heat, uh, pull the heat out of the burner on longer passes. So shorter strokes, shorter passes, can kind of help keep the wood heated and you get a, a little bit of a richer dark value in there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so you might notice that on the, the screen, this looks 
super solid black. Um, you can achieve an almost perfect solid black value while wood burning, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. So please know that even though it looks perfect on the screen, that you can still see a little bit of the wood grain showing up underneath. Um, <clears throat> it's not a true, true solid black like you see on the screen. Some of that is just the camera. So... <clears throat> Here in a bit, once I get this burned in, I'll kind of lift up the project and show it to you. And you can see, oh, <coughs> some indentation where I press down maybe a little bit hard on the wood. And you can see some shiny bits from the burnishing. You can see a little bit of kind of golden color, uh, golden brown color peeking through the black. All of that is very normal. I think sometimes that we see black backgrounds on social media and it's like we can't get it we can't get it well it's not really a true black so um, let me see here about pulling this up and see if I can get you a little bit more but you can see there's a little bit of shine you can see some texture in here where I was pushing a little bit harder um, and hopefully you can see a little bit of that, that lighter values kind of coming through there. So just because your, your black backgrounds don't look like what you see on social media, don't worry about it. Um, we can't always get it exactly perfect. But right there, it looks amazing. So some of that is a little bit of camera work. <clears throat> And then I, I do confess to when I go to make prints of my wood burnings, um, I will take a picture of my wood burnings and then I'll put them in Photoshop and I will kind of adjust the values to where the black backgrounds look super, super dark. Um, just because I like the clean look for the prints, but it is uh, pretty difficult to get that true solid pure black that we see. It's very easy to adjust it on the computer though, so it's kind of fun. So I don't have much of a buffer zone on, um, on these edges, so I'm gonna put a little bit more in there of the buffer zone before I try to fill in the black background. And anytime that you're burning cross grain like this, really try to have a very light pressure because it's easy to kind of sink into the wood grain and um, it can kind of uh, damage the surface of the wood a little bit. <coughs> just go really 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 slow and if you're burning on an end cut piece like where you can see the the circular rings the circular ring pattern um, you have to go even slower because it just takes so much longer to burn um, on an end grain piece okay you guys can see the lighter backgrounds cool yeah it looks amazing on camera but if you're tr trying to do it yourself and you get frustrated, don't be frustrated because it's not a pure black. Close, you can get it pretty darn close if you spend a lot of time, but. I try to be um, transparent with that, guys. And I also find that the lower temps are better for the black backgrounds. Um, and by lower temps, I mean the max heat setting on the Versatool, but do not do the max heat setting on the razor tip or other wire tip burner. 
because if you take a wire tip burner that operates at a higher temp anyway and you crank it up to max and you try to burn a black background, um, that top layer of wood just kind of like peels off and sticks to the burner and it creates a mess. So if you want to burn a black background with a wire tip burner, turn your temperature down. Um, it'll take longer but you'll have less of a mess to kind of um, fix later. Patience is really important when burning the black backgrounds. And even when using a torch or something like that, it still can damage the surface of the wood. So just take your time. All right, now let's fill that in, guys. <clears throat> check in here guys um, so what did you guys what was your favorite thing <clears throat> about this Christmas did you get uh, something cool like what was your favorite present or what was your favorite memory that you made uh, this Christmas like I, I love uh, getting art supplies for Christmas <clears throat> so he's fun and just spending time with with family is really nice too we always uh, tend to do a lot of running around on Christmas but since we were sick this year <clears throat> we all just stayed home and it was very relaxed and, and quite lovely so just filling in this little tidbit here and then we will jump over and start burning the owl um, probably start with the eyes because that's always fun It is pretty warm. Lisa, you finally closed on your house. Oh, fantastic. Um, Laura, I have used a torch on different projects, but not wood burning. Uh, it seems a little bit, I don't know, maybe hard to control, but something that might be interesting is to get just like a scrap piece of wood and start playing around with a torch, because that would be pretty cool. Just see how it handles and what you can do with that. Um, Larry says, you only use the Versa tool for the black background. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Um, <clears throat> I have used the razor tip for the black backgrounds, but it's definitely um, different. It takes a little bit more, I think, patience, maybe. You're doing a little smoke detector above your head. I know, it's getting pretty smoky. I'm about done with this little bit here, though. Yeah. Checked in on the chat. Woo. I think I'm a little bit behind here, guys. Hold on. Um, 
Um, Lori Lee, your son got of emer out of emergency surgery the week before Christmas. Oh, dear. Yeah, you had a pretty quiet Christmas as well. I hope your son gets the feeling better. Um, Terry got to do some commission work for graphite portraits. Cool. Mm -hmm. Vivian got a really nice and warm robe, but your favorite thing about Christmas was getting to spend time with a friend. Very good. Um, Angela says, off topic, but did you decide on using Discord for the Patreon group? I could set one up. Wouldn't be too hard. Yeah, we never we never did that, did we? No, I can get one set up. Okay. Wouldn't be all too hard. My IT person can help me with that. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. A Discord. So that would be only like a, like a little community where you can share pictures and yeah. texts and questions, right? You huh. can set up voice channels, text channels, image channels. Cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, we have not done that yet, Angela. I'll be there. You can yell at me. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sounds great. <clears throat> All right, so we have our little um, alcove of the tree is burnt in there. All right, so... I'm probably going to try to zoom in a tad and see if we can't uh, get a better angle on those eyes. One more time here. Come on. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully that is in focus enough. I think I might move me. Oof. My hair's kind of doing funny stuff. Nobody told me. I've got like the Cindy Lou thing going on there. Okay. It's fun. <laughs> it is fun unless you don't know it's there. Yeah. Alrighty. So let's move me up. No, not that. Out of the way. Okay. I want you guys to be able to see Mr. Owl. Alright, how is that? Okay. So, generally I like to use just the shading point for burning the eyes. It has a nice crisp um, tip to it that works really well. Um, hmm. Whoa, checking on the chat here, guys. Um, Dawn says you have a razor tip shader, but it's got the split in the middle and it catches on the wood. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, whenever you're working with a wire tip burner, generally the thinner the points are, the harder I find that they are to use because they are sharp and they can kind of cut and dig into the wood. So if you are burning with a, ra uh, a wire tip burner, like the razor tip, you might try getting like the chunkier tips that you can. Um, I think they hold the heat a little bit better. They don't flash heat and cool really quickly like the th super thin ones. Um, that's why I like a solid point burner generally because the temperature regulation is a little bit more consistent and even. But those super sharp points can really dig and catch the wood, absolutely. Um, and it can be hard to burn smoothly. Um, oh dear, Laura, you've been sick too. Oh dear, yeah, it's no fun. Um, Terry says hi. Howdy! <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's see about burning these eyes. So I usually try to burn the darkest areas first. Um, 
eyes seem to be, oh, they might look really tricky, but they're gonna be quite simple here. We'll make it easy. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna maintain the highlights in the eye. So I'm going to burn using just that upper tip. I'm gonna burn around the highlight of the eye. And then same thing over here. And then I do have a little bit of a muted uh, reflection in the eye down here. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly outline that. And on the other side. And that's gonna kind of maintain the purity of those values until I can work around them. So next up is the pupil. It's pupil. The big dark spot in the middle of the eye. And we're just gonna go really slow and careful and burn around that. If you need to turn the wood, um, that definitely helps. But take your time on this and make sure that you don't get, um, you know, out of your lines. We want this to just be as perfect as we possibly can. Now I'm gonna jump over to the other eye because this area is getting kind of hot and sometimes to help avoid that ghosting or overburn, it helps to kind of jump from place to place. So this is gonna cool while I'm over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use that upper tip of the shading point to very slowly and carefully go around the eye. If I make a mistake, if I'm working in tiny little sections, I can usually kind of fix the mistake as I go. But if you just try to like whoosh and um, draw the eye in with one continuous motion, I usually get myself into trouble on that. So lots of tiny, short, controlled movements. And then I'm gonna jump back over here and basically fill in around those bright highlights that we put in. And I'm gonna jump over here, do the same thing. Frank. Okay. <coughs> Just take some time to burn around these little highlighted areas without scorching them. And if you are using a wire tip burner, turn it down. Uh, that'll just give you a little bit more control. And same thing with the solid point burner too. Um, if you ever feel like you're a bit out of control with it and it's hard to regulate your temperature, go ahead and just turn it down, turn the temp down. You can blow on the point, that helps too. So that's a pretty good pass uh, to start with. This, this eye seems like a little bit long um, instead of round. So we can go back through and kind of tweak the edges a little bit to make it more rounded and less like egg shaped. It's a little bit better. Okay. Next we are going to burn this darker area around the outside of the eye. It's not completely solid black, like down here it's a little bit lighter. But same thing, we're really going to want to work in short, controlled sections. He has a little bit of a scowl, so 
uh, we're not going to be completely round up here at the top. We're going to pull that darkness down and make him scowl a little bit. Like, he's like, how dare you look at me in my little house here. In my house. Same thing over here, just really short controlled sections. And you don't have to make those edges super dark right now. Um, hi, Estella. You gotta go. Okay, yeah, no worries. Uh, the pattern is not on uh, Wood Burning University yet, but I will post that soon. Okay. And then we're going to outline the other section here of the dark area around the eyes. As we come down, um, like in this area, we do have a little bit more texture, which is kind of fun. Okay, so once we kind of get that blocked in, um, you can go back and darken it up a little bit. Generally with eyes, I do like to work in layers so that I can build up and get these areas nice and crisp and dark without getting that ghosting and overburn. So just take your time. And I'm going to jump over here a little bit and let that area cool down. just keep building up our layers and making it darker as we go. And then again down here we have some nice little bits of texture where our um, dark area is kind of like going into the, oh, the feathery area. So like without eyebrows or anything, he looks like he's kind of tripping on something. He has seen something. He's seen something, yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of uh, downgrade his startled expression here in just a moment. He's definitely freaking out right now. So I'm just going back over and adding another layer to this area to kind of darken things up a tad. Okay, so before I add like the finishing touches to the eye, I think I'm gonna give him some little eyebrows here. I don't think that owls have eyebrows, but it looks like it. <laughs> Barbara is asking, will next week's live stream be on Patreon? Yes, it will be. Everything will be moved over to Patreon. Uh, so tonight, this is our last like free um, live stream on YouTube. 
after that, everything's going to be moved over to Patreon because I've been doing the, the free uh, weekly live streams on YouTube for like over a year, almost a year and a half. And um, I've been told that I give too much away. So we're going to move everything over to pa Patreon. And so to access the videos, you'll go to Patreon and just click on the link in there. So it'll be not really accessible just on the general YouTube, but it will be run through YouTube. You just have to go through Patreon to get to it. So, And you can join Patreon for as little, I think, as $10 a month now. And the cool thing is you get the patterns for free and you also get like all the other live streams. So this is live stream 77 and each live stream is two hours long. So you will have access to a ton of great content and patterns. There's also some full length tutorials on there that are not live stream based. So it's a great, great resource. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Okay, so, woof, he still looks kind of crazy. He's a crazy owl. Oh, and on Patreon, you also get um, a discount on the pa uh, the patterns over on Woodburning University, so that's cool too. So you get a lot of free patterns on Patreon. Uh, Mina, that's a great, uh, great thought. You can pay for the year in advance if you'd like, and you get like a 15% discount, which is pretty darn cool. Oof. I don't know if he's looking like more angry or what, but... A fluffy little thing okay so right now I'm just kind of sketching in some of the areas around his eyes um, one thing that I love is adding these little tidbits in here that come up and around the above the eyes kind of ties the eyes into the eyebrows <clears throat> and we have some hard creases in here. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we have a really bright highlight up above here on the eye. And then the rest of this in here is going to be a little bit more subtle. So apply a little bit of shading to that just to soften it and kind of push it back. On this other side, it's not uh, like the upper highlight isn't as bright, but I think I'm going to leave it. Um, and then just a little bit of a light softening of that lower um, highlight. The next part is like you see them, uh, the owls in color, and you've got that golden yellow appearance. appearance? appearance. And all that is is just a gradient from the top down. So... This is where the eyes are going to look so much better. We're just going to add some soft shading up here and then pull it down into a nice gradient. So a gradient is any time where you have a lighter section and it blends over into a darker section and that's all it is for the eyes. So again, darker at the top. Turn the burner down if you need a little bit more control or blow on the point. And just pull that gradient down a tad. So if you want him to be maybe a little bit more dramatic, you can darken up that tidbit at the top. Make the gradient darker at the top.
and then just pull it down. So now see how his eyes have just really got that nice three-dimensional depth going in there. Um, they're pretty darn cool. So eyes look really challenging, but if you just break them down, they're, they're quite, quite simple. So, ah, uh, <laughs> Larry says the live stream is a hoot. I love it. <coughs> So Mina put a link into my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Manisa. Um, very, very good. Okay. <coughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you all right there, bud? Yep. Okay. All right. Angela says you are way behind on watching. So yes, Discord is great for sharing and communication. Absolutely. Um... Just check in, see what else I got. Thank you guys so much for joining uh, Patreon. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, there's just so many great things on there. And it's a, a work in progress, and I try to make it better. Um, but there's a lot of information on Patreon. Uh, Meta says, uh, I may have missed it, but I appreciate the time you take to send us the line drawing. I like seeing how much info you transfer as I always transfer too much. Yes. So I did not get, um, I wanted to get that uploaded for you guys, the line drawing. There's a few patterns, like see here I have my note. I need to do hand drawing, hand drawn patterns on all of these, including the owl. So, and the little Santa. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't do that right away is because when I transfer these on in red pen, I like to be able to see the red pen because it shows up exactly um, how I can see on everything. But when I go to transfer it again for you guys on a white sheet of paper, I have to draw over these lines with like a black pen or something and it just makes it a little bit more difficult uh, to, to kind of see. But I do have a lot of patterns that I need to hand draw for you guys and that is a perk of Patreon and I do plan on um, a, updating all of those patterns that you guys uh, should have. Um, Lori Lee, have you missed any updates on pre-ordering calendars? Yep, that happened I think the 15th of December. But Lori Lee, if you want to send me an email, I might be able to um, send you a calendar directly. I think there's, an, uh, there's another lovely person that missed the, the window as well. It might be a little bit extra because I just, I don't get the discount that I do if I buy calendars in bulk. But if you really want a calendar, I can put your address into the people that make the calendars and send it directly to you. It might be a little bit extra, but um, shoot me an email and we'll see if we can get you a calendar, okay? Yeah, he does look less startled, mellow yellow. Okay. Um, Larry, no, you can no longer order a calendar online. That window closed on the 15th because I have to, it's, it's frustrating on my end because I get a discount and then I have to like order a certain amount of calendars. But if you, Larry, did not get a calendar, um, I think you're talking about the calendar, Larry. Anyway, if anybody did not get a calendar, send me a message directly. How about, um... Admin at woodburninguniversity.com. Sorry, trying to think about that one. Admin at woodburninguniversity.com. Send me uh, a message and I'll see what I can do to get you a calendar if you missed that window. All right. So now he's less surprised and now he's like contemplating our demise. So... I'm just gonna add in a couple of these little nasal holes. I think the, the reference photo, it was a little bit big. So I'm gonna make them a little smaller. And then for these little feathery tufts, I always like to use the very upper tip of the shading point to kind of sketch these in. For a couple reasons. One, it gives me a nice crisp edge. And then number two, if I go back and add colored pencil, um, wherever I would burn, it creates an indentation. 
and then you add color pencil over the top and it creates a really nice uh, kind of a three-dimensional appearance. Meta, yeah, I love uh, transferring on with a red pen because if you transfer on with a ballpoint pen that's black or blue, it usually disappears into the values and it's really hard to see. So I love using a red pen. But when I transfer the patterns over onto a sheet of paper for you guys, it's usually after the project's done because then I don't, I don't need the red lines anymore. And if I trace over the red lines with a red pen, I don't know where I've been, so I usually trace over it with a black pen. <sighs> I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Lisa, the line patterns, they're hand-drawn line patterns, so they will match up exactly with what I have done here. I basically just draw over the pattern, uh, the reference photo that I used for myself. I give you guys the exact copy of every line-for-line -line, um, tidbit of information that I transferred on there. And I did get a little bit behind this summer on getting out those hand-drawn patterns, but I will correct that and get um, those out to everybody. So I'm just kind of going around here sketching in some of the darkest areas. Um, bum, bum, bum. Okay, so Lori Lee... Uh, okay, yeah, send me a message for the calendar for sure. I'll, I'll try to make sure everybody gets a calendar that wants one. But I, you know, I had to set a deadline for uh, various reasons. I didn't know if the, the discount was gonna hold and all that that I had, so. But if you want a calendar, just shoot me a message and we will try to get that happening for you guys. So owl fur is, owl fur, that's a good one. Um, owl feathers are a lot like animal fur and the fact that they are just lots of short little strokes here. Um, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that you build everything up in layers, just like we do when we're burning fur. So the shorter, whoa. <laughs> I thought I ran over a, a cat. Okay. Um, the shorter feathers are gonna have shorter strokes, just like the shorter fur has shorter strokes. So that's one pass there. And the more layers that you, um, that you add, the more depth and dimension that your project is going to have especially when it comes to fur and or feathers. So every time you see me tap, 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 um, I'm still using that same, um, yeah, back and forth airplane mode. <laughs> Terry, I'm glad I can make you laugh with owl fur. That's uh, not... Um, TH, I did get your, your email reply, um, and I will run that, your, your address through the thing, and I will get back with you regarding the calendar. I got a little bit whistle bit today trying to get this project done, because I had, I had nothing this morning. I had, uh, no plan, so it took me a while to get this all pulled together today. And I had to dig out our propane tank to see how much propane we had. And let's see, we got firewood and done a few other things today. So it's been busy. But I will uh, put that in and get back with you, TH, so you can get your calendar. <sighs> uh, Lori Lee, for future references, where will we find updates on deadlines? You don't want to mess it up again. I don't think you messed up at all, Lori Lee. Um, I think that was totally me. Um, I am not the best communicator. And, you know, we had the flu coming through the family. And I just was having a lot of challenges. And a lot of times I send out emails and they go into the spam folder too. So, uh, 
I will try to be a better communicator this next year. That's one of my goals for 2024, 2024, is to try to communicate a little bit better with everybody. So, and it was on my website for Manisa Pyrography. I don't think there was anything on Woodburn University regarding the calendars. So, it was kind of a last minute thing. Um, I definitely... I think pull that together too late in the year and I will try to get all that pulled together much sooner next year so but in any case um, guys just shoot me a message and I'll try to take care of take care of you one way or another so just another bit of layering there um, thanks guys I appreciate all of you Yep, it's, uh, holidays are always kind of a crazy time of year. And it's usually like my best quarter for sales and I didn't even try this year. I did not even try to promote my artwork and get sales and all that. I just had so much on my plate. I didn't even, didn't even, wasn't even able to, to put out promotions and stuff like that like I normally do. So. It kind of cost me quite a bit, um, but we do what we can. And I just could not take on any more this uh, holiday season. So I'll wait till next year to try to sell some originals. It's usually, you know, that's usually when I do sell originals is um, during the holiday season. So these little tidbits up here are kind of fun. They're... <laughs> Bad cat. Oh dear. So these little tidbits here are kind of fun. Uh, they're a little bit sporadic, almost like elect uh, like electricity or, or lightning bolts or something in here. I think you're about to get a cat. So generally I like to burn the darkest values to the lighter values. So I'm just kind of starting in with that in mind. Um, let's take, ow! Hi buddy. How are you? Do you want a cat? I don't think he wants me. Oh, well he can't really come up here. I mean he can, but, and there he goes. Okay, come on bud. You said he can. Well I know he can, he's capable of jumping. <coughs> Okay. Um, I know, but now I have a glare. I can't see anything. All right, so I'm going to kind of uh, darken up these areas here. I have a really bad glare, and I can't really see much, so I'm going to burn by Braille one-handed with a cat. Purr, purr. All right, buddy. Just don't. can hear him on the microphone all right so just adding some more layers in here to kind of darken these areas up it's a little bit darker up in here as well are such a helper. This is Chipper, by the way. He's a snuggle bug. Yes, it is a catastrophe and I'm a multi-cat sing. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. <coughs> Thanks, Lori Lee. Okay, just adding some extra depth and dimension here, darkening up some of these areas around the face. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, he he just loves snuggle time too. Okay, uh, so see, we're we're already with our second pass here of uh, texturing our owl fur. Um, it's uh, definitely developing some more depth. I know. Problem is, he could be here for like 30 minutes, which is a wonderful problem. He's a long term snuggle bug. Holy cow. All right, so that's working out pretty good so far. Um, let's see what we can do up here. I'm going to start adding in. Uh, just a little bit of texture and shading up on the upper part of the noggin here for the owl. I'm going to rock the point down and make it at a pretty flat angle. So instead of like burning uh, like this, I'm going to rock it down and burn uh, with it a little bit at a flatter angle. That's going to give me a softer, um, softer mark, almost like a kind of a shaded... All right, there he goes. Bye, buddy. Um, a little bit of a softer semi-shading. It's like a cross between texture and shading, but it's more shading. Um, and we're just gonna put in some of these little tidbits here. Kind of a dot and slide, a dot and slide motion, but make it a little bit faster. It's a good way to get that texture in there. Thanks guys, yeah. Chipper, he's a snuggle bug. They're both, they're both big time snuggle bugs. Bobby visits me a lot and doesn't stay very long. Chipper, he doesn't snuggle very often, but he'll be with me for like 30 minutes until my arms go dead. Okay, so going back over, we're gonna add another layer because layering is just the key to dimension here dimension not dementia that would be bad i don't think layering has anything to do with dementia dementia is not very cool it's very sad so if you go over an area just once with your shading and or texture and it looks flat just keep adding more layers and it'll all kind of come together. Another thing you'll notice is that it's a little bit darker at the top. Remember to get that rounded appearance. We're going to have shading kind of down here and up at the top and then it's going to be lighter in the middle. So that's going to give our the owl noggin a little bit more of a, a rounded appearance like like this way kind of forward rounded. So I'm going to add a little bit more texture up towards the top part. And then down here as well. And just some sporadic texture shading throughout the middle forehead. And so see it's starting to get a little bit more of a rounded appearance in there. And to accentuate that, even though it doesn't show it as much on the reference photo, you can kind of do a little bit more at the top if you want. Just to kind of make the, well hi! You're coming. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, come on. You're coming back. Now I can't see. Everything is. Thanks, guys. All right. You guys are not helping. Okay. So same thing with the ear here. We're going to have some nice, just subtle texture down underneath. Gonna be darker on the underside of the ear. Is it an ear, guys? It's a tuft. It's an owl ear tuft. And same thing over here. Hey, that's not looking too bad. 
All right, glad you're back. <laughs> oh, Terry, yeah, no, he's back. Yeah, he's back again. Gosh, I gotta put your butt on my desk. <laughs> I can't see anything, buddy. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. All right, go get him. Thank you, all right. So I'm back here, all I can see is glare. I'm trying to burn, I have no idea what I'm doing. All right, thank you for the cat assistance. All right, another layer down underneath here on the ear tufts. At least he's getting better about letting me know that he's gonna climb me. Otherwise I get really scratched. Okay, so how are we doing here? Okay, yeah, Chipper's gonna learn wood burning like the hard way. Do not grab the wood burner. It's not a good thing. All right, here I'm gonna add another little bit of layering in this dark area. We, we wanna get this area nice and rich and dark. It's gonna kind of push back a little bit. Remember that with uh, values, dark values tend to push back, light values pull forward. So we're gonna get a nice pull and pull of uh, values here. So because there is so much to do with layering, a lot of times I'll work in just one area. Like I'm just gonna focus on the noggin tonight and we'll get in lots of layers and a little bit of blending and some great texture. But if you try to jump around, I think too much on a project, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So try to stick with one area like we're doing here and we're just really gonna try to get this head um, figured out and make sure everything looks good. Oh, come on. So I do have this nice dark ridge here. I'm going to kind of blend that up into its surroundings a little bit so it's not so harsh. So pull it up, pull it down. And you can see how I'm pulling uh, some of those dark values up and down into the lighter areas. That'll help to make it doesn't look like, like a highway running through his face. It's a little bit more blended. And then we have a darker area in here. Thanks guys. Yeah, I did. Um, Vivian says that the eyes have more depth and shine than the photo. You can adjust that a little bit, like artistic license. This one right here is not very bright and I wanted to keep that a little bit more bright in my picture. So you don't always have to follow the reference photo, use it as a guide, and then you'll learn, you know, kind of how you like to portray the subject. Um, and you can make little modifications like that, which is pretty fun. And this would be helpful if you turn the wood so you're not wood burning sideways. And let's see, around the face here to the side, it's gonna be a little bit darker and that'll make a rounded appearance. We have some markings right here. Get a little bit darker. <coughs> And we're just gonna put in that back and forth like fur texture. Um, Terry says that's where you'd have a lot more starts and stops. Yeah, um, just keep practicing that airplane motion to get that. It's almost like a swing set every time that you put the burner down on the wood, like a swing set or an airplane landing and taking off. Just always have that gentle, smooth transition. And after a while, you, do, you don't even think about it. It just becomes um, second nature. But all these feathers have a pretty short um, stroke, so just try to really match that with your burner. And if you've been out here on the live streams, you'll notice that, that I do like to do kind of like a lighter under sketch 
for fur or feathers. It gives me a great way to, oh, kind of get the texture in place and know that I'm able to kind of um, adjust things as I go. If I were to just start laying in really harsh um, lines in here for the, the texture of the feathers, you could do that. But what if you're looking at the wrong part of this, uh, the reference photo or they're going the wrong way, the strokes are going the wrong way, it's gonna be much more difficult to correct that later on. So by sneaking up on it and starting with some nice gentle, uh, almost like an underpainting, a nice little sketch first. You can make sure that the everything's going in the right direction and then you can come back in like this and just kind of darken things up a tad. So layering is where it's at. And layering takes a little bit more time for sure. But I definitely think it's worth it. So just coming back in and pulling in a little bit darker areas for the owl fluff. And then um, you can see there's kind of like a little ridge here of um, feather fluff and it has that nice curved appearance to it. So you're going to want to have some darker values down here underneath. And then some darker values pulling down from the top. And then you're gonna have a kind of a lighter, a little bit of a lighter zone in the middle. And that'll make that nice rounded poofy uh, feel to it. And working from the bottom up, we're going to build some more darker values underneath. and kind of fade them upwards. Thanks, Laura. Yep, the eyes are looking pretty darn cool. See, we have some little fluffy ridges in here. And let's keep building up some of the fluffy under chin area. I 
think maybe we ought to uh, work on the uh, beak. Because he, he's looking kind of funny. So let's add some shading on that beak here, guys. A little bit darker towards the bottom. It's going to pull up and get a little, little bit lighter. And I can add another layer of shading on the bottom side of the beak. Okay, what else can we do here? Pull some of this down. looking a little bit better. Alrighty. So we can go back in and add, start adding some more layers in these little, they're like little nose whiskers. I don't know. They're kind of fun. And then we have a little bit more shading down underneath the nose whisker and beak area. Sorry guys, I don't have technical terms. I don't know owl anatomy. So you get what you get. With weird terms like nose whiskers and beaks. I mean, it has a beak, but I don't think it has nose whiskers. Then again, it's my story. I guess I can tell it how I want. Oh, too funny. Uh, Mina says, you like the touches that I added to the little Santa? Yeah, I kind of just darkened up some of our dark values and then um, added the border. So that was a pretty fun little finish out. I did not, well, I did add color. I added a little bit of white colored pencil to Mr. Santa and I think that was it. So just still kind of richening up. That looks better, guys. He doesn't, he doesn't look so weird. Um, all right, let's continue working around the eyes and see what we can do to kind of finish up around the eyes. <coughs> Barbara, I did get your email with the reindeer. Um, that's like right when I was coming down with a fever, so I didn't get back to anybody at that time, but that was so super cute. I loved it. I'm really hoping that we can get his little owl head kind of finished up here tonight. So a lot of this area in here is just going to be nice light sketches. Yes, it did come through, Barbara. Thank you. That's so sweet. So I'm going to try to blend in this little dark zone here. I'm going to try to blend it into the cheek area. Everything looks kind of yellow on the screen. That's kind of interesting. Um, TH, yes, I think you will be able to chat on Patreon live streams. I'll probably run like a test and all that. It'll, um, the Patreon live streams, everything's gonna be run through YouTube, just like it is here. Um, it's just that you have to go through like the doorway of Patreon to find the link. 
uh, it's not just you don't go to YouTube to find the link because it won't be visible so you just go to patreon and then click on the link and it'll bring you right back over here to YouTube I think is how that works so the chat and everything the way it looks and feels um, should all be the same but I'll probably run a test um, just to make sure that everything uh, does work out the way it's supposed to so still just kind of blending his cheek in to that little hard edge there You're welcome, TH. So see, oh gosh, guys, look at how nice that is. How we blended that, that dark edge into the cheek area. That's looking really nice. So we did a little bit of shading and a little bit of texture to kind of pull that in together. And it's starting to look a lot more cohesive and I think more well-rounded and blended. So just little tiny fine tunings here. I'm gonna do the same thing and pull the, the darkness from there, that ridge, pull it into the, the eye area. Because I think a lot of times um, owls have such a unique pattern that when we wood burn them, we focused a lot on the pattern, almost like um, tiger stripes or leopard spots, and we forget to tie those patterns into the critter. So leopard spots or tiger stripes aren't just hard edges. They, they're fur that just kind of blends into each other. And the same thing with owls here. We want, we want everything to kind of blend inward together. You'll still see these stripes right there, but you have to blend them into their surroundings. Otherwise they look, I think, a little bit, or they can look a little bit harsh. And then it, it takes away a little bit of the realism, I think. So nice subtle blending with spots, 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 stripes, and other features like that. Still working around the edges here, kind of darkening things up and getting some nice blending going on in there. I think this needs just a little bit more blending from that dark ridge into the softer areas. liking it guys I think it's looking pretty cool I'm gonna add a touch more values darker values in here and that's a cool thing about starting off kind of light and then working your way darker and darker um, it gives you a little bit of leeway to make minor adjustments along the way and um, just continue to build your values as you go. But if I were to, to come in here and just lay down a hard line right here, even though we see kind of a hard line around those, those cool patterns, you don't want to do that. You want to continue to build everything up in like the right direction if that makes um, if that makes sense 
Thanks, Mina. Yeah, it is. He's really coming to life here, I think. He's looking, he's turning out pretty good so far. There's always room for a little bit of improvement and tweaking and adjusting, but that's why starting a little bit lighter always helps. So let's work a little bit over here on this side of his head. There's lots of little tiny short strokes. And now keep in mind that the owl, um, his head and face is the main subject, so it's going to be more in focus. So a, a lot of times you'll see that I do rock the point up instead of having it um, flat like that, I am going to rock it up and use a little bit more of an aggressive tip um, to get some of these nice crisp lines. Um, as we work our way down into the flowers and stuff, I'm going to be working with a much flatter angle of the burner and everything's going to look kind of soft and subdued down there, a little bit blurry. But if you want your subject to be in focus, go ahead and rock that tip up, whatever point you're using. Um, try to get a little bit more of a crisper edge to um, to kind of the edge of the point. That makes things look a little bit more in focus. And let's see, we can darken up and add another layer in here. How is that? I think it's okay. I'm going to darken it just a little bit here on the edge. And to make the head look rounded from side to side, we're going to have darker values on each edge. And then it's going to be lighter overall in the middle. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, TH. Thanks, Mina. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, this is, this is a fun little project. And when you stay focused on a, a small, oh my gosh, hi bud, you scared me. Okay, all right, come on. Um, if you kind of stay focused on a smaller area, like we're just wood burning the, the owl's noggin tonight, you can see a little bit more um, progress, I think, in a shorter amount of time. I might darken this a little bit more, this outer edge. Thanks, guys. And so you can see I kind of have a harsh edge right here on this outer uh, dark zone. So I'm going to just gently pull some of that dark value over into a lighter area and soften that up a little bit if I can. Okay, that helped a little bit. Okay, what else we got? What do you think? Hmm. Scooch forward so we can see what we're doing. So we have just some real light fluffy feathers underneath here. So let's try to fill in this zone, make that a little bit more lifelike. Just nice um, back and forth motions, match the curvature of the, no, don't grab that buddy. Do not grab that. Are you okay? Just nice back and forth motion. 
Oh, is that getting your leg? Is that it's a mean dusk, isn't it? So again, very nice light values here. I'm just trying to sketch in um, the direction of the fur, make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be before I start going darker. Because I don't really want to have a big correction later. It's easier to correct things if everything is pretty light to start with. Okay, once you get the direction of those feathers in there, then we can go back and start building up some of our darker values. With multiple layers and a little bit of blending and fine tuning. And hey, he's looking pretty good. Um, so something that I'm just looking at here on the screen that I've I've seen with other owls that I might do is I'm going to add a little bit of a dark along the side here. It can kind of increase the severity of their expression if you add just a little bit of darker area on the side. I don't want it to make him look like a girl bird. Could be a girl, I don't know. I just want to kind of intensify his look here. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to add a little bit more tidbits on the side. Hey, that's neat. I like it. Oh. I have an itchy nose. <laughs> oh, dear. And let's see. What if we kind of pull this up here as well? Okay, that could be cool. Ooh, I like that. So I'm pulling up a little bit of darkness right here to kind of intensify his look. Hey, that's pretty fun. It's funny how just a couple little lines here and there around his face, around his eyes, have really kind of intensified his look. So very cool. All right, a little bit more, uh, a few more layers over in here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, it kind of uh, increased a little bit. Oh my god, I'm still missing something here with those eyes. There's some level of drasticness that I want to increase. Maybe there and here. Cool. Uh, eyes are so fun. It's a lot of fun. To, they're fun to play with. So I hope this gives you guys a nice little um, view into probably I would say the importance of layering, um, the importance of, oh yeah, layers right now is, is really where we're at on this project. Lots and lots of layers. The more layers that you add, just the more depth that you get. Blend out any harsh areas like these zones in here. I'm gonna blend those out a little bit. Um, I also see oh, I have cat hair on my nose. Um, I'm gonna add a little touch of shading underneath the eye. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how just tiny little marks can really make it uh, very cool. Like if you're, ever, if you're ever burning a portrait of somebody and their face looks like <clears throat> puckered, their mouth looks too small, add just a little bit of a line on either side of the outer edge of the, the mouth and it elongates their lips and it fixes it just like perfect. It's really cool. Because I've wood burned mouths before and they look all puckered up. 
So just elongate the edges and it turns out pretty cool. And some more blending. And then we can kind of um, start building up some of our values here with the neck fluff and get that a little bit more interesting as well. So darker at the top, it's gonna kind of fade down. <laughs> Thanks Vivian, say hi to your best friend for me. So sometimes you can see I'll start with just a nice short stroke um, right here where it's darker and then I'll kind of blend that out with longer wispy pieces and that makes it a real cool multi-tiered layering effect. Kind of like that. And then we need darker down below. guy is napping man he's having a, a good snooze who's that oh that's her sister no there's no room for two of you right now so again a bit darker towards the bottom shorter strokes and then you can kind of lift those up and make longer strokes from the bottom upward. And so you get that nice little rounded appearance. Um, probably need to go back over and add just some general light shading in there to kind of soften it a bit. It's, whoa, help. Is mine going up yet? No, she's okay. gonna scratch my bottom. More bad. I This is a, a one cat show right now. I cannot hold two cats. Well, I know I can, but not with a burner. Look out! Okay. All right, so he's looking nice and fluffy. Um, let's take a look uh, at finishing up a little bit of this and try to find a good stopping point. Because that's all art really is, guys. That You're never finished. <laughs> you will never be finished with an artwork. Just find a good place to stop. It's kind of... Kind of the key and the goal. It's funny in the little neck creases in there. Um, let's see. I think this needs to be a little bit darker here. And over here. <clears throat> Thank you so much, guys, for all of your wonderful statements. I do what I can here with what I got and uh, we'll just do the best that we can. All right, Mr. Owl, there's still something going on, I think. Maybe a little bit darker right in here. Just trying to match the photo and see what I'm missing. Sometimes I can see it a little bit better on the screen. I think this needs to be blended out a tad. And this. Nostrils a bit larger. We can do that. Yeah, I was, um, I, w I didn't really want them as big as the reference photo because I thought they may have been a little bit big on the reference photo, but I can make them a little bit bigger. And then I think we need a little bit more value shaded area up here. So yeah, sometimes it just takes um, a, a good chance to step back. One of the coolest things that I see is on the camera. I, it's like I can just step back and see. Um, another thing that I think is these things are too short, so let's elongate those and pull them down. But I would say when you're working on a project and some little area kind of bothers you, take a look and try to see, okay, why does this bother me? What's, what's going on here? Um, 
and see what you can do to kind of make it better. And then obviously, you know, we've been at this for two hours. So take a step back, take a look um, from a different perspective and then kind of come back and see what, um, you know, how you can improve it later. So I'll probably get done here and then I'll see all these kind of things that need to fix. So that's all right. We are not um, printers, guys. Every project that we make is not going to look exactly like the reference photo. Um, we can get close, but every time, and I've even done multiple images of like the same owl and every time, and it's got different structure, it's got different spots, it's pretty cool. If you ever get the chance to do the same kind of a project multiple times, it's amazing how different they can turn out. So it's pretty cool. Good night, Larry. All right, so I think we're getting pretty close here. I think my clock is off. I think my clock is fast. 7.57 actually okay all right for the longest time I think one of mine was not very accurate good night Lori Lee thanks for being here tonight guys alrighty so let's zoom out here and get kind of a quote bird's eye view no pun intended of our project here and see how we are how we're doing so I'm gonna zoom out then I'll refocus so you guys can see a little bit better. Hey, guys, that's not too bad. Uh, once you kind of zoom out, he's looking a little bit better. Uh, there's always room for more blending and smoothing and adjusting of values and all that. But so far, he's looking pretty darn cute. So, in an angry sort of way. But... All right, so let's see. Uh, next week, I will be on Patreon. So if you want to continue and see how this little guy turns out, please join me over on Patreon. It is definitely worth the money. I mean, if, you know, <coughs> some people like $5 coffees. So two coffees is the same as uh, a Patreon subscription. So 10 bucks a month. But you get uh, so many good tidbits. You get all the patterns uh, that we do for free. You get discounts on the other patterns over on Patri uh, Wood Burning University. So there's a lot of cool perks. So lots of good stuff over on patreon.com slash miniso. All right, so next week I will probably try to finish the, the, the chest and body of the owl. So we'll kind of really stay focused on Mr. Owl and get that in place and then the following week probably work on some flowers and try to finish up that bark so it'll all be fun all right thanks again so much and i will see you next week over on patreon oh can't see all right good night guys and yes, have a happy and safe New Year's. Good night.